Hello and welcome back to PHP Basics. My name is Sean. Over the last year or so, I've been getting more and more requests asking me to cover Ajax. Now, with this being a basic PHP channel, I've typically tried to stay away from that because Ajax can be pretty tricky. But I was trying to think of a real world situation where uh, we could use a simple Ajax jQuery script uh, to kind of demonstrate how Ajax works but not really get so in depth that it becomes really confusing and one example that I thought of was being able to type a username into a registration form and check to see whether that username is valid or not in real time so that's what we're going to do today now to get started let's take a look at PHP my admin I have a database called test and I have a table called accounts this accounts table has a username, password, and an emailed field, but we're only worried about the username. Now before we get started, we're going to use Google's hosted API for the jQuery library. So go to Google and just type Google jQuery. The first link that comes up is the hosted libraries. We're just going to copy this script for now. We'll use it here in a minute. Okay, so let's jump into Notepad. Create two documents. One's going to be your index.php page, and then in the same directory, create check.php. The check.php is going to be the only one that actually has HTML in it. So we can go ahead and put our tags in there. And we'll leave it alone for now. Now, typically, we don't do too much proper formatting with the index page, but in this case, we need to. So we'll have HTML tags, open and close. We'll also have head tags. And then, of course, the, our body tags. Inside of the head tag, that's where we're going to copy that script. Right below that, we're going to create a new script as well. And this is just going to have a type of text slash JavaScript and then we can close that alright great so we're done with that for now let's go and jump into the body and we're going to create a very short form um, the method is equal to post and the action is going to equal nothing and then we can close that All right, so like I said before, we're just going to use a simple username. So we'll just say enter a username. And we'll do a line break there. And we're going to have an input type. All of this is pretty familiar. It's called text. We're going to give it a name of username. And then we're also going to give it an ID. The ID is going to equal username as well. Directly below that, let's put a span tag and we'll give this an ID as well the ID will just equal output and here's how this is going to work as you're typing in a value here it's going to show up next to uh, even though it's broken down a line it's actually going to show up right next to it in the in the web so uh, let's go ahead and save that we'll take a look at our page and it just kind of looks like this okay so here's where the fun part begins now if you haven't learned jQuery yet I would really recommend taking a break for just a little bit and learning some of the very basic functionality of how jQuery works because we're going to be using the functionality of Ajax within jQuery um, if you're not familiar with jQuery just hold on uh, I think the more we do this the more you will become familiar with it some of it is kinda like PHP but a lot of it, a lot of it is more like JavaScript so uh, if you're not familiar with it just just hold tight and uh, just try to keep up the best you can uh, so the first thing that we need to do is make sure that the, that the document has loaded and in, in order to do that we're gonna use a dollar sign and then in parentheses we'll just say document and then dot ready now inside of this ready is where everything's going to happen and what we're going to do is just create a function and we'll give this a uh, we'll, we'll look for a variable called e 
and we'll just close that function. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is check for whenever a key is typed. In, in order to do that, we're going to grab the value of this text document based on its ID. So we can say, and, and whenever you're referencing an ID, you always start with a dollar sign, and then single quotes, and a hashtag. And that will be username. And then we'll say dot key up, which means whenever you press a key, it's going to perform a function. And that's what we'll do here. We're just going to say function. And then you always have to check your syntax because it's a little bit different. In jQuery, you actually put, um, we're putting the function inside of this key up function. So there's a semicolon after it and that might throw you off. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create variables to keep things structured. So we'll create a, a value or a variable based on the a variable based on the value of whatever we're typing into this text field. So we'll say var username is going to equal, and we can just say this since we're inside of the, uh, the username anyway, dot val. All right. Essentially, this is just the value of the text field. Right, we're also going to create a value for, or a variable for the output, and that's simple as well. We'll just say, uh, create a new variable, we'll call it output. And that's simply going to equal hashtag output, which is signifying this guy right here. This is really just uh, an output placeholder. All right, then since we're also going to be referencing our PHP page, let's create a variable for that as well. We'll just call variable uh, PHP file, and that's going to equal check.php, which we currently already have named up here. All right, so basically we're going to say if username does not equal nothing, then check to see if the username exists. All right, so this is where uh, things get a little bit tricky. Um, we're going to use the function of uh, jQuery, and it's the post function. And here's how this works. The first thing that we need to do is reference our URL, which in this case is going to be PHP file, or we could have just typed in check.php. The second part of this is the variable that we're going to pass to the PHP page. Now we can call this whatever we want. It's going to be in curly brackets, and I'm just going to call it check user. And then the check user is going to contain the value of username, or for right now, just username, because that's what we've issued the value of the username text field, uh, just username. Okay, and then whenever that gets returned, we're going to use a function to make that display on the output span. And we'll just do that by typing function data, or we can call this whatever we want, it doesn't matter. And then we'll say, uh, output dot html is going to equal the value of that data or we could just say um, output dot html is going to equal the value of that data but they do the same thing essentially display data on span okay so now let's actually jump into the check.php page So first thing that we need to do is check if uh, this check variable or check uh, user variable actually exists. So we'll say if is set the posted value of check user 
All right, so if it is set, then the first thing that we need to do is connect to the database. All right, we'll do this the same way we always do with uh, MySQLi will equal a new MySQLi. And this has four properties. It's uh, your server name, which for me is localhost. The user, which is root. The password, which for me is nothing in the database, was called test. All right, so now we're going to create the variable from that posted value. Uh, we'll just say user, whoops, we'll say uh, create post variable. It's just going to be equal username equals MySQLi escape string post check user which is pretty much the same thing that we would do in typical HTML. Alright, so then we're going to query the database. We'll just say result set equals MySQLi query. And simple enough, we're just going to say select all from accounts where username equals username and we'll make that limit one. Okay, so now we'll say if result set num rows is equal to zero, which means that it's not in the database, we're gonna echo, you can use this, or we'll say username is available. We'll say else echo username is not available. So essentially, if I type anything but Sean, it should show that it's available. Okay, so let's go back in and let me double check my syntax here real quick just to make sure that everything looks okay. Uh, so, you, so we've created a variable for username, uh, and the username is going to contain whatever we've taught typed into the text field. Uh, the output is nothing more than a placeholder for where our information is going to be displayed. Our PHP file is our check.php and we're saying if username does not equal nothing then this is where the actual magic happens. We have a, a post function with our PHP file. We've sent the variable of username to the PHP file and then it's going to display whatever is returned from that PHP file as data into our output area. All right, let's give it a shot. All right, so we have, uh, let's see here, a syntax error on line two. That's typically something that would happen. Uh, so let's just see. Yeah. I bet you caught that before I did, didn't you? All right, so let's go back and try this again. So if I say S is available, H is available, A is available, Shaw is available, but Sean is not available. So after each keystroke, it is checking to see whether this username is available. Now what we could do is we could use uh, some typical form checking to see if it has so many characters before it actually starts to query the database. That way it's not scanning for every single username that starts with the letter S. Um, something else that we could do if we wanted to, uh, we could just put in a little span here. Span style equals uh, color we'll say green and then we can do the same thing down here only make it red if it's not available and let's take a look and see what that looks like alright so I didn't change this to red so now basically if it's not available, it's going to show up in red. 
but if it is available then it's going to show up in green so um, this is the very basics whenever it comes to Ajax there's so much more that you could do with it but this is just the very basic functionality of what it can do um, we are working with 32 lines of code including white space so this is very simple and kind of like usual this is one of those things where if you just keep doing it over and over uh, you'll get the hang of it and things will start making a little bit more sense like I said if you're not familiar with how jQuery works go and learn the basics of that first before going into uh, jumping into Ajax um, because it can get quite difficult but I hope this is something that you can use I hope it's something that's beneficial to you and if you have any problems leave a comment below and I'll see you guys next time stay creative